Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on six ways to create great content that influences your audiences. One of the things I always ask myself in preparing a speech, in agreeing to speak to a group of people, is I have clarity around what I want people to feel after I've spoken, what do I want them to think after I've spoken, and what I, do I want them to do after I've spoken. This think, feel, do relates to an emotional response that I can create, new knowledge, new information that's going to help them achieve their goals, and the action, the steps they're going to take. So in creating content that influences people, you should always ask yourself, what do you want people to do after you've spoken to feel, after you've spoken, or to think after you've spoken? Just sets the baseline. So Peter Dews, my name, public speaking trainer and coach, conference speaker, and my purpose in life is to assist people like yourself to be more effective, confident, influential every time you get before a group of people. So welcome to today's webinar. How to participate, please ask questions as we go, take notes, uh, apply to your own personal circumstances. You've got a presentation coming up. Is your content going to be influential? Which of the tools I'm going to share with you are you going to use to make your presentation more effective, more influential, more persuasive. So let's get started. First things first, why bother to create great content that influences your audience? You're an expert, you're, you're a subject matter expert, you know your stuff. Why not just get on stage and just share your passion, your knowledge, the way it comes naturally from you? And that's fine, and the passion and the knowledge is important, but you need to create great content. The reason is because content is still king. You need great content to influence people. It needs to be relevant to your audience. So you may be a subject matter expert, you may be really passionate, but if the angle or the subset of your knowledge that you share has no impact with the people in the room, and no relevance, why should I care? Then you're not going to be influential. And you need content that inspires people. Remember, what do you want people to think, to do, and to feel after you've spoken? If I think of you as a lovely speaker, you speak really well, you've got a great voice, lovely platform mechanics, really passionate person, and I'm not inspired to do anything, so I don't change, I don't learn anything new, then you haven't had the influential impact, the persuasion that perhaps you meant to have. And great content needs to answer the what's in it for me question, because at an, as an audience member, I am generally selfish. When you go to seminars, when you go to workshops, you are generally selfish. And by selfish, I mean you're there out of self-interest. You want solutions, you want answers, you want ways forward. So this is why great content that influences people is important. So how do we create great content? What's some ideas, some strategies that we can use? So the first one is solve a problem for your audience. What's keeping them awake at night? What are the issues that they're facing? If you solve a problem for an audience, you are going to have influential content. And you know the topic you're speaking on. And if you're a financial planner and you're speaking to a group of people approaching retirement, the problem they're going to have is, do I have enough money to retire? Can I survive on the old age pension? 
What's the best strategies I can have in place to make sure I retire with sufficient money to live the lifestyle I want? If you're talking around health and safety and there's an increase in, in near misses, an increase in hand injuries, an increase in uh, interaction with snakes, snake bites in the Pilbara, and you have a message to reduce the risk of being uh, exposed to snakes, uh, how to do snake bite first aid. So you're reducing the risk and helping people be more confident, go about their business. What problem does your message solve for your audience? Once again, important that the message matches the problem that the audience has. So one of the metaphors I use when helping people prepare for public speaking is I say walk a thousand miles in your audience's footsteps or walk a thousand kilometers in your audience's footsteps, find out what their pain point is, what their issues are, what's keeping them awake at night and use your message, your knowledge to solve their problem and you will be influential. Tell a story that makes the audience the hero. A lot of people tell stories and they use the word I a lot. So I was uh, struggling to retire. I had insufficient money and I really didn't know what to do. And I found a financial planner and I started to put 10% of my income away and I was able to retire. Notice the I, 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 I. If you can turn it around and make it about the audience. So imagine if you could put together a plan that helped you bridge that gap that you're facing at the moment with your financial plans, with your amount of money you've put aside and your desired retire, retirement age and what you can do to bridge that gap so that you can sleep at night, you can comfortably know that you're gonna have the lifestyle that you deserve when you, when you finally retire. You are able to achieve this. So this is more about you, less about me. So when telling stories, it may be your story, your success, how I achieved that gap, but make sure you put plenty of emphasis on the audience. The metaphor I've heard used before is, when we talk about I, we're looking in the mirror at ourselves. Make sure you turn the mirror on the audience and make the audience the hero as well. And in terms of uh, speaking, the I and the you, I use a ratio of 20% I or me or myself and 80% you or, or your or how you will be able to succeed, 20-80. So as you tell those stories, make the audience the hero. Similar to making your audience the hero, um, show people a way forward. Shine light at the end of the tunnel. Give them hope that they too can succeed. So it's not just about telling a story or inspiring people, it's giving them something practical. And some of this can be around reframing problems, reframing issues. And I love this little metaphor that I use often in my conference speaking. You look at a pile of rubble, are they stumbling blocks stopping you achieving your success, uh, stopping you from achieving financial security or are they building blocks? And the, the reframes are uh, make your weaknesses your strengths. So when I look at myself and I'm hoping you know about me as a person who stutters, and all of you will have your own stumbling blocks around public speaking, your nerves, your fears, maybe your mind goes blank. 
my biggest stumbling block is my stutter. But having been a professional speaker for 13 years now, people realize that my stutter is my strength in helping you and other people realize that you can learn the skill of public speaking. Show people a way forward, shine light at the end of the tunnel. Is it a threat or is it an opportunity? COVID-19 shut down a lot of businesses. A lot of people had to change and we use this term, we had to pivot. And now the opportunities that it's brought up with people uh, working from home, the blended learning, the, the hybrid seminars. And I know a lot of professional speakers who spoke at conferences and their business was completely shut down, have been able to pivot and grow through online conferences and hybrid meetings. And what it's happened is it's opened up their business, not only to Australia, flying all around Australia, but now they get invited to speak and get paid good fees around the world because the hybrid meeting enables them to be in their office in Sydney, Melbourne, Perth, and deliver to a conference in London, in New York. If you are an expert, think of the opportunities, show people, show your audience the opportunities to move forward. Was it a mistake? We've all made mistakes. Or was it a wonderful lesson? The lesson that you've learned from, the lesson that I've learned from and I'm sharing with you to help you move forward. Nerves before speaking, or are you excited? These are the reframes. These are the putting the positive spins. These are the giving people a way forward. And then there's those people that are stuck and they blame everyone. We call that the victim mentality. When people learn to take ownership and your responsibility when you're speaking is letting people know that they are responsible for their own journey. They need to take ownership for their own issues, their own financial plan as they move towards retirement. Take ownership. With ownership comes unlimited potential, unlimited opportunity. Show people the way forward and you will influence them. Writing your content that's influence, keep your messages concise and targeted. Concise and targeted means on message all the time. Not too much information, concise and to the point. Uh, not mixed messages, not confused messages, not messages that I can interpret my own way and walk out with the wrong interpretation. I was traveling through Southeast Asia a few years back and I saw this wonderful sign and it was a grocery store. So think of Woolworths here in Australia or Coles and it was called Cold Storage. And then the subline was the fresh food people. Now, Woolworths also uses a byline, the fresh food people. Woolworths, the fresh food people. Cold Storage was the name of the supermarket, the grocery store, Cold Storage, the fresh food people. Now, maybe I'm a little bit pedantic and I've thought of Cold Storage as not fresh. So when you pick your apples from Manjima and you put them in cold storage for six months and then you sell them, they're not as fresh as when they come off the tree and you eat them straight away. So for me, the message was a little bit mixed. We keep everything here in cold storage, but we are the fresh food people. So keep your message concise and targeted. Don't let people misinterpret it like I did. Uh, Common mistakes if the message is unclear. It's called scattergun approach. So you say lots of stuff and hope people will pick the right message from that. Also called spray and pray or a verbal dump. And if you look at those signs, that, that image, if this is the road out of here, 
I wouldn't know which road to take, depending unless and depending upon where I wanted to go. So make your message clear and let people take the road that you want them to to get to the place that they want to end up. There's that wonderful passage within Alice in Wonderland. So Alice has gone down the rabbit hole and various adventures occur. One part in Alice in Wonderland, she comes to crossroads and doesn't know whether to go left or right. Is confused. Do I take the right road or do I take the left road? And there's a Cheshire cat sitting up in the tree. And so Alice asks the Cheshire cat, which road do I want to take? And the Cheshire cat said, well, where do you want to go? And Alice replies, well, I don't know. And the Cheshire cat's response is, then it matters not much which path you take, which road you take. If you don't know where you want your audience to go, then anything you say will do. This is the importance. If you want to be influential, of having that clarity, that concise, that targeted message. Don't do spray and pray. Don't do scattergun. Don't just say stuff, even though you're an expert, make it targeted on message. Let's pause for a moment. All right. Another way to be influential in creating content is have a clear next step or a clear action or a clear pathway. So three pillars to success, the three steps that'll help you reach financial freedom, three strategies to grow your superannuation before you retire, the three keys to first aid around snake bite. Bearing in mind the message still needs to be targeted and relevant to the audience. Uh, if I'm working in down south and in winter and you give me a message about three steps to snake bite, I may, to be safe and treat snake bite, I may glaze over a little bit because my chances of encountering a snake in the southwest of Western Australia in winter are basically zero. Not so in summer, snakes, plenty of snakes in summer, but in the Pilbara, you have a much longer snake season. So even though you have a step, a three-step process, a four-step process, still needs to be a targeted message. And speaking three steps to transition to retirement, to 20-year-olds, 21-year-olds starting work, three steps to retirement, probably too soon for them. There, there'll be very few people that are starting to worry about retirement at the age of 20, 21. So may, your message may need to be more around how to grow wealth, how to, how to grow wealth so you can live a lifestyle free from financial stress. You don't need to mention the retirement. What's your three-step, four-step process, your three pillars of success for your message in your topic that you're the expert in? And strategy number six to make influential content when you're preparing a speech is what are the three questions on your topic that you are most frequently asked? The three questions that if you answer them, 90% of the audience are going to walk away with the knowledge, the information that they need to feel to know or to take action to achieve 
what they want to. So if I go back to financial planning, transitioning to retirement, now I am not a financial planner. Am I transitioning to retirement? Uh, maybe I'm certainly old enough to be in that thinking about retirement. So three common questions may be, number one, how much money do you need to retire? How much money do you need to retire? What is that magic number? Is it a million dollars? Is it $1.5 million? How much money, if that is the most common question a financial planner gets asked? Number two, is it possible to live on the old age pension? Is it possible to live on the old age pension? And a third question might be, should I sell my house to release some money so I can live the retirement start lifestyle that I want? If you answer the three most common questions on the topic that you're an expert that is relevant to the audience in the room, then you will create content that influences and inspires people. So there's six strategies to create influential, uh, persuasive content for every time you do a presentation, maybe run a workshop. Which ones of these are going to work for you? Different audiences might need a different strategy. Solve a problem for the audience. Tell a story that makes the audience the hero so they walk out feeling that they've got this. Give people a way forward. Show them light at the end of the tunnel. Make sure the message is targeted, concise. Don't do scattergun. Have a clear next step. Three pillars to success. Four strategies to financial freedom. And answer the three questions that you are most frequently asked in the topic that you're speaking on. There are six strategies for you to be more influential and to craft a message. Remember, content is still king. And crafting a message that has influence uh, makes people feel, uh, think, or do something different is crucial to being successful and influential as a speaker. Those of you who are webinar junkies, our next webinars coming up are in January, later January. So we'll be having probably four weeks off with no webinars during Christmas, New Year. What habits make you a successful speaker? Great content is one of the habits. Content for the audience. What habits make successful speakers? What is it they do well? As a professional speaker myself, one of the things I need to do is watch and observe lots of other speakers out there, in person, online, virtually. And what is it that I've noticed, in my view, make them really great, really successful as speakers, as opposed to a, you know, an ordinary speaker? 24th of January, the idea of authenticity and how authentic speakers have great impact. How do you be authentic? Why is authenticity important? 24th of January. Workshops, only got one scheduled, early February in Perth. Uh, we're doing some corporate workshops around Western Australia. Monday, the 14th of Feb, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., thinking and speaking off the cuff. This is the off the cuff presentation workshop. You know how to reach me. I'd welcome questions your comments, any feedback, any topics you would like to hear from me in the future. Now, remember, when you're creating a content for a presentation, you want to be influential. You want to have impact. You want people to change. Use one of these strategies, solve a problem, tell a story, making the audience the hero, give people a way forward, keep your message concise and targeted, have a clear next step. And what are the three common questions that if you answer, you're going to give 90% of the audience exactly what they want? My name is Peter Jew, public speaking trainer and coach. Can I encourage you to get out there, change your world one conversation at a time?